Lucky Land Casino asking people what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kids' PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Leftovers. Or. The DMV. Number 97. Or. House cleaning. Or. Chumba Casino always brings the fun. Play over a hundred different games online for free from anywhere. You could redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. Live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. We're prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Lapped up, lapped up, lapped up, lapped up. That is the heartbeat of your favorite podcast, Tennis Podcast. I'm your host, Nick Amell. <laughs> are you, what are you doing over there? I'm keeping up the heartbeat. <laughs> okay, Brad is on camera doing a heartbeat with his hands somehow. Uh, yes, that's Brad Choma on the other end. He's the host of Doomsday, History's Most Dangerous Podcast. Also a frequent sidekick host on this show. And he's still doing the heartbeat with his hands, just so you know. Mm-hmm. That is opening his hands and then closing them again at heartbeat-like rhythm. You're welcome. Brad, do you want to just keep doing that the whole show? And you don't even have to talk? Well, actually, okay, on that, I'm doing it to the rhythm of staying alive. Everyone knows that's what you're supposed to do for a proper mm. heartbeat. You can actually yes. use Mbop by Hanson, too. Let's hear it. Okay, how, how does that even go? Mm, bop, 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 yeah. Boo, bop, Do, beep, beep, bop. beep, beep, beep. So I can do that in the background, or I can keep doing the hands. I don't think there's a robot beeping, but... <laughs> but yeah, okay, please keep doing it the entire time. And the first time you stop, I'll kick you off the show. <laughs> nice. <laughs> this will be your workout for, for the day. <laughs> You're going to burn some calories. Uh, well, anyway, Brad is doing heartbeat hands. He was most recently on episode 187 where I put his doom and gloom knowledge to the test about the top 10 deadliest upcoming natural disasters. Brad, give the folks like a, an intro, who you are, why you're here. Well, my name is Brad, and I've got a podcast, and I wasn't about to rap, and it's about people who die in strange ways throughout history, across time, and by the time you're done listening to an episode, you'll be uh -huh. a little bit lighter from throwing up, and you may have learned something to save your own life. It's true. It's history stories disguised as horror stories. And Brad does an amazing job. I don't know how he gets episodes out every other week when there's like maybe no less than 400 sound effects per episode. That's a fact. <laughs> but he makes it happen. Brad, I'm glad you're here. Do you have any other devastating pet rodent losses to speak of since we last spoke? No, nothing. Okay. Okay. Great. Because last time you were here, you really like gave me and all the listeners like some trauma with your story of Ratso the Rat. So I just wanted to be sure there's nothing else you're going to surprise us with today. Will you please share like the worst of the worst whenever anybody calls and said, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> of the listeners saying that story was too much for me? <laughs> yeah, I would love that feedback. <laughs> There's just a lot of people giving me R.I.P. Rat. So it's even just like get that. a get a clicker and just uh, even just give me a tally that I can work with that. I don't know. At least a dozen people probably reached out to me and said R.I.P. Rat. So please no more pet traumatic stories next time on the next episode. And I'm like, look, normally Brad is telling us about how people are dying in excruciating ways. The first time you bring up a rat dying of natural causes, people can't handle it. It goes completely south. Yeah. Yeah. Well. But that's okay. We're, so we usually, when you're on the show, we talk about people dying. It's kind of your specialty. And so I'm going to introduce this week's topic, which is indirectly related to people dying. And my question for you this week right now is how many human organs have you eaten this week so far? Me? Yeah. Zero. None. 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 Not, okay. No. None. No, it's not. Okay. No hmm. organs. You Looking eaten. all over. Nope. All good. Okay, well, that doesn't sound quite right, but all right, we'll, we'll go with it. Checking my teeth, all good. Okay, okay, then maybe you'll answer better on this one. How many human organs have you bathed with this week like their bath toys? None. None? None. 
actual human not organs. Even... Okay. I've got Weird. some human organs that I sometimes play with in the tub, but not not really. Uh... No, none. Not this week. Oh my god, I just got that, you fucking sick oh, old man. <laughs> <laughs> you pervert. Brad, I, it's so inappropriate, I just don't even know what to say. We don't tell jokes like that on this show. I don't know what you're doing over there on your show, but this is a very PG fucking show. Dear listeners, I'm sorry I did this to you all. Jump over to my show. We'll continue over there. Nice. Smooth. Well, Brad, you do discuss death and bodily harm quite extensively on your pod. I thought you might know more than the average person about the human body. So tell me, what is an organ? When I say organ, what am I talking about? I don't know the medical definition, but it's, it's basically... I think an organ is just a hunk of meat with a job. <laughs> a lump of matter. <laughs> I like that. No, you're right, though. The medical definition is a group of tissues that has a unique purpose. They perform vital life-supporting functions like pumping blood or eliminating toxins. I would take a step back and just say that I answered it fully correctly, and all that nonsense about all of them being vital is nonsense. I guess that's true, because at least one that I can think of that's not vital. Although it will hurt if you have to get it taken out, but we'll get there. Brad, to date, there are 79 generally recognized organs in the human body, both internal and external. These structures keep us alive and make us who we are. So why am I telling you all about organs? It's because today you'll be guessing the top 10 organs in the human body based on mass. The largest, the biggest. On mass? On mass. That or is weight. so much fun. Oh my god. <laughs> Aren't you glad you cleared your schedule to be <sighs> here today? <laughs> I am. Okay, this is worth it. All right, how do we want to begin? Well, first, let me tell you my sources. Sciencefocus.com, Healthline.com, USAToday.com, the CDC website, and health.clevelandclinic.org, as well as some supplemental notes from Wikipedia. Brad, what's your favorite organ besides the one you play with in the tub? I'm quite fond of my lungs. Hmm. Why? They're where most of they, they help make... I used to have this cat. <laughs> oh, no. You said there'd be no more dramatic stories about animals today. This poor cat was so small that we named her Pee Wee because she was, she was just little, little, little. Fucking love it. And 10 when, out of 10 on pet names with you. I swear to God. When Pee Wee would get scared, she'd walk up and she'd go. <laughs> and I'd always have to say, you got to pass air over your vocal cords in order to do this. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, ever since then, I'm just like, oh, breathing. What a thing. We don't do it enough. We don't spend enough time thinking about it. So yeah, I'm going with lungs. Final answer. Yeah, breathing is something, well, much like all the organs, they just kind of function when you're not even thinking about it. And thank goodness for that. Thank Ideally. God for that. Thank Jesus Christ. Yeah. Oh, what's your least favorite organ? Organ you could just ugh, do without it. Well, I'm not going to go with a simple line. Okay, so taking like appendix off the table, gallbladder mm -hmm. off the table. What's the worst part of the duodendum? That freaky poop tube that connects <laughs> where food comes in and where food... But you need that. Yeah, but you could get rid of some, like the worst part of it, like the end of it where it's been, you know, where it's where it hasn't been cleaned, maybe. I don't know. I would go in with a camera and choose my three inches of duodenum to get rid of. Okay. And how many people have you done that to already? Zero. This will be my first, Nick. <laughs> okay. All right. Listeners, stay on for the special Tennis Pod Plus exclusive after the end credits where Brad is going <laughs> to... And, do a... and a doomsday short safety segment where I describe how to survive self-surgery. Right. Brad, top 10 organs based on weight. I'll let you go ahead and guess. Why don't, you, why don't we start with one of the ones you mentioned there? The duodenum? The lungs? The lungs. Let's start right. with that. Bo similar to that. <laughs> They're both very similar functions, I think. We'll learn more about it. Brad, the lungs is the fourth largest organ in the human body. And despite being so high up on the list, number four, it's only 2.9 pounds. Okay, so that brings me to my first point. And I'm sitting here thinking, okay, first, how many damn organs are there? Because I'm thinking 79. Counting, and I'm counting bones in my head like, oh, Christ, it's almost 300 in my foot. What am I going to do? Fucking idiot. But I think my issue is that I have a bad sense of organ girth, organ weight, because you never handle them, right? You Everybody only ever does. see them. You only yeah. ever see them in photos and in, uh, you know, threatening letters and stuff. And so you, you, you don't know, like you think, oh, your heart's like the size of an apple and maybe it's a grapefruit, you know, maybe... The lungs are so big. I think my kidneys might be massive. I'm sure that your duodenum is like... It's big. Yeah, it's classy. It's, it's big. It's classy. You could use it as like a garden hose. So you keep it clean. Yeah. So, so you keep it really, really no. clean. No. So, oh, so you, you, you keep it dirty. 
I just keep it as it is, man. Just natural. Dirty do addendum. Dirty, dirty addendum boy. <laughs> hashtag dirty do addendum. <laughs> There's a hashtag of the week, everyone. I can only hope that dirtydoaddendum.com is available. <laughs> I'm not going to look. God damn, I'm not going to look. I've seen a lot of weird shit on the internet, especially in researching this show and today. Uh, but I will not be looking that one up. Fair enough. All right. Where yeah. do we want to go from here? We're at the lungs. We're at the lungs. They're, they're the fourth largest organ, but they're only 2.9 pounds. I found that kind of surprising about all these organs is even the biggest one is not that big. In the grand scheme. But anyway, these, the lungs are the primary organs of the respiratory system in humans and most other animals, including Ratso, RIP, including some snails and a small number of fish as well, Brad. Hmm. The lungs are part of the lower respiratory tract that begins at the trachea and branches into the bronchi and bronchiol, bronchiolus, I don't know, and which receive air breathed in via the conducting zone. Is everyone taking notes? Is everyone glad they're here so far? You don't regret listening to this episode today? This is all fun information? Cricket, cricket, cricket. <laughs> when, you, when you inhale, your lungs oxygenate your blood. When you exhale, they release carbon dioxide, and they also provide airflow that makes vocal sounds, including human speech, possible, and maybe peewee the cat. Rest her soul. These are located in the chest, and if your lungs are not located in the chest, please let me know. So some fun facts. On average, an adult male's lungs can hold roughly six liters of air. This is about as much as three two-liter soda bottles. But I think it's good that you have air in your lungs and you don't pour three two-liters of soda into your lungs. That probably would not be great. How high up <laughs> on the lungs? Sorry, go ahead. As you take a drink. Oh, not when it's drowning. <laughs> I'm drinking the drown. But I'm only got two liters. Oh, no. See, I knew you had, you have so many sound effects in your pod, I never realized you made all of them with your mouth. <laughs> Most of them. <laughs> At least half. Uh, Brad, did you know, smarty pants, that your left lung is actually slightly smaller than your right lung, which allows space for the heart. Together, the lung surface area is as big as a fucking tennis court. I goddamn love those two last facts. I didn't know either of those things. That's fantastic. If you were to stretch out your lungs, like, you know, how do you say that? Like, if you were to flay them and yeah. stretch them out, a tennis court inside every single person, that's wild to me. You know what's wild about that? You know what would be easier than stretching out to the size of a tennis court, but would make a really amazing movie? Is the killer who removes the person's lung and then... Yeah. <laughs> Just suffocate them inside. They just shove them inside their own lung like a bag. They've only got one lung left. <laughs> they suffocate inside their lung. High irony. Brad. Okay. Hashtag All the novelists funness. and screenwriters listening right now, the listeners of the show, write this down. The lung body bag killer. He takes out one lung, leaves the other one in so you stay alive, stretches it out to the size of a body bag, stuffs you in it. You suffocate inside it. Yeah, you look like you got eaten by a snake, but it's your lung. That's great, yeah. Actually, if you were in your own lung, funny thing though, you would still be able to make like whistling noises out of the, um, the connector to the trachea. It would be like mm, a, it would be like a be whoopee open. cushion in there or something. Just like, yeah, <laughs> it would look like a whoopee cushion. But you'd, if you're a killer, you're probably tying that off, right? You're not keeping it open. <laughs> Balloon knot. Yeah, I guess I'm going to tie it off. I'm a killer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The lung body bag killer. Yeah, I don't want my lung. I don't want my lung body bag to start to smell. So I'm gonna tie it off. Right. It's <laughs> true. That's thinking ahead. Brad, that's the lungs. Except two things, and this is why your show yeah. is four hours when I'm on it. You can have your lungs outside your body. People have done that before, and there've been people who have been born with the lungs on the outside of the body. How? I don't know. Well, how how do they survive with them outside? I mean, they must be connected still. Yeah, there's no pressure like, on them, so they just go... <laughs> Although they don't have a diaphragm attached to them at that point, so I don't really yeah. know. Are you just making things up? No, 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 that's a real thing. And uh, are you making things mm. up? Are you making things up? Because I heard you say that the whole show. there were fish with lungs. It and you said, said that? small number of fish. And I just sat there and boiled quietly and didn't say a word about it at the time because I didn't want to be rude and interrupt, but... It, that's what it fucking said! I'm going to tell you, if you ever see a fish that can smoke a cigarette properly, that's not a fish. No, we're finding this out. I'm not letting this stand. Are you looking up so, lungfish? Are you looking up smoking fish? Because you're just going to get recipes. Okay, there is a fish called the lungfish. It is a rare species 
The Australian lungfish is the most primitive, with only a single lung compared to the paired lungs the others have. So there are fish with lungs. But isn't, doesn't it just fill up with water? Is it holding air? I, I didn't look. Wouldn't it just float on top of the water and not be able to breathe <laughs> if its lung was full of air? Brad, these are questions that a marine biologist could answer for us. But first, before we go do that, I need to know if you're going to apologize and how to me on criticizing hashtag Nick's notes. Are you going to write a written apology? Are you going to read one out on your show to start your next episode? Are you going to just say it now? Are you going to send me a telegram with an apology? Are you going to send me a lovely text after your usual midnight sext? How are you going to apologize? All right. If you send me your mailing address, I will send you a personally handwritten apology on a postcard. But the apology is just going to say, oops. <laughs> it's still worth it. I'll give you my address. <laughs> All right. <deal. laughs> All right. Well, the lungs. I, I mentioned another organ in talking about the lungs. Do you remember what that was? It's why the left lung is smaller than the right. Which is the third thing that I love about that thing that you just told me is that the left lung is smaller to accommodate the heart a little easier. So I'm going to say the heart. Do you think the heart is bigger or smaller than the lungs? I'm going to say smaller overall. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to say it weighs less. It weighs less. It's the fifth largest organ on our list today. The lungs are just about three pounds. The heart is a little over half a pound. So Oof. it's quite a big drop from lungs to heart. So from lungs at four, heart would be, I'm going to say, seven? Five. It's the that's very it? next thing on the list, yeah. Oh my God, that's a huge drop off. You were correct. Yeah. These organs are tiny. And you know, the human body, uh, an average adult male, I don't know, maybe 180 pounds is the average, 200, I don't know. But it's something like that. And you would think a larger percentage of the body weight is organs, but really it's a pretty small percentage. That is wild. Yeah, it's mostly bones and meat and muscle and all that other stuff that gives you your weight and fat. Lots of fat. Lots so of fat, right? Oh, much. Let me tell you about the heart. You probably don't know much about the heart at all. You probably may have not even heard of it, so I'm going to fill you in. The heart pumps blood through the blood vessels of the circulatory system. In just one minute, your heart pumps 1.5 gallons of blood. The blood is delivered to every cell in your body except the cornea in your eyes. Why not the cornea of the eyes? I don't know. I didn't get that far. Wow, this is uh, riveting. Is... <laughs> I've learned nothing. <laughs> You're not supposed to ask such reasonable questions. You brought questions, so Brad. much. You brought a charcuterie plate of facts about the lungs, and then you... <laughs> no, I'm not done. An apple. I'll have heart make you heart make beep beep sound. Heart <laughs> heart make you think so good. Heart goes to the PP at times. <laughs> Mine's are going right now. I'll tell you. Oh no. The heart is approximately the size of a closed fist and is located between the lungs. Now, here's some, here's some good facts for you. Your heart works with your blood vessels to pump blood throughout the body. Arteries take blood away from your heart and veins bring blood to the heart. Together, these blood vessels are about 60,000 miles long. So, at what point, and I'm sure this is universal in North America, at what point did somebody teach you that your intestines were like three and a quarter miles or something? Yeah, I remember when you were a kid. That. Yeah. And then you really start to think about it and you're like, okay, so I have an occasion where I eat something. Oh, it's not working. Oh, it's going to come flying out the other end. And that stuff has got to be doing like 450 kilometers an hour or something. Just, you know, because <laughs> the math, the timing doesn't add up for me and it never did. Right. You eat something bad and you, let's say you have diarrhea and it usually could be pretty quick. And it's magically appears. <laughs> read that it's traveling. Yeah, that is, that is something else. <laughs> it's going. Yeah, Brad is demonstrating for all of us watching on video. Splat! Uh, yeah. But that is crazy to think about. And it's also, how does it all bunched in there? And it's just a small space in your, you know, stomach area, abdomen. It's not like it's going from your head to your toes. It's all bunched up in there. Here's what I want to ask the audience. Do a lot of your audience own headphones? No. I doubt it. I really doubt it. Okay, well, you've seen headphones on TV or something, right? Like in a movie or something? No. Okay, well, in Canada, we have these things. They're really annoying. You put them in each ear, and sound comes okay. flying out, and it tells you things, or it makes you dance or sing. Weird, okay. If you ever take these headphones hmm. and unplug them and put them in your hand or in your pocket or even mm -hmm. on a mm -hmm. plate, they will self-knot into... I mean, I've heard this. It's like four dimensional math figuring out what happens here. I don't know. So 
you're going to tell me that you've got, what did we agree? 17 miles of, of intestine lupin several and several miles like yeah. it was just thrown into your stomach like spaghetti against a wall and it's just in there and it doesn't knot up never knots up i mean i think it does for in a very rare instance which you would need to go to the hospital immediately but you're right for 99 percent of us your intestines will never get tangled up like headphone cords look the human body really is amazing i mean that sounds cliche but the way it operates and it's all automatic pretty great I can already see future me the next time I meet someone who has, has had to have that kind of surgery before, twisted intestine. And now I'm just going to be like, okay, I get that. That makes sense to me now. Yes, that's yeah. logical. They open you up to fix your intestines and the doctor is just confused. And he pulls out just a tangled up wad of headphone cable. Mm -hmm. there's no, he's like, there's not any damn intestines in this man at all. You're running a flashlight around. You're swearing <laughs> at the stuff. Yeah. So then the, the food and waste is traveling through a... Uh, At phenomenal speed. <laughs> through a tiny little cable. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's even more impressive than that the heart, the blood vessels are about 60,000 miles long. But who, who's done that? You know, some serial killer out there is donating this information to science because they pulled out the blood veins out of a person and stretched it. And it's like, they're holding the blood vein like it's a, a hose or something, and they're just walking along the highway for 60,000 miles. Is the earth even 60,000 miles? Surely. Okay, so but... here, here's, here's my observation. So I immediately mm -hmm. think the childlike part of my, it says, oh my God, so how does, how does oxygen get to your brain if it's got to go 60,000 miles? Clearly, you've got 490 trillion of these things, and they're all yeah. like an inch long, right? And so that's how the oxygen is spread evenly. Yeah, yeah. So here's the thing. If I send you a postcard apologizing, show up in person to deliver it, yeah. and then run, start at the top of your head and run a knife down the length of your body, you know, around mm -hmm. the bong and back up the other side, and then peel you open, could you ever imagine if what was left underneath was just vein arteries, sorry, that you would look like a freaking, I want to say like a Cupid doll or a Chewbacca or, or something. Mm. You just look like a, like, poof. you'd look like, yeah. like pink hair. Like cotton candy. You're right. And you could even taste some. You know what? I think this is worth it. I think you should come kill me, mm -hmm. cut me open, do everything you just said. Right. As long as you record it and promise to put it on TikTok for me. Okay. You, you are welcome to kill me as long as it goes viral on TikTok, I, uh, which you can follow me at Tennis Pod on TikTok. I'm willing to do that. Sorry, I'm on kayak.com right now. Why? Can oh, I stay at your place? To... Yeah. Go no, on. absolutely not. I got to stay at Booking. Dot. Absolutely not. I don't want my children anywhere near you. Okay. All right. So, have you ever thought about the heart? It's this muscle that pumps blood, keeps you, it's vital to staying alive. When and where did it become a symbol of love, right? And when did it become this heart, the, the heart shape that we all think of when we think of a heart? Because it's not really that shape. The first known depiction of a heart as a symbol of romantic love dates back to the 1250s. The scalloped shape of the now familiar heart symbol, with a dent in its base, arises in the early 14th century in Francisco de Barbanero's Documenti de Mora Painting from the year 1320. Chef's kiss. More. Yeah. So yeah, it's, you know, roughly a thousand years ago is when humans first started to look at the heart as a symbol of love. That's really sweet. Although I don't, I don't know why, though. It didn't really tell me why. It just said when. I think I know so. why. And it's not that sweet. Why? The image of the heart as a uh, romantic or sexual icon is theorized to be from the fact that when a woman leans forward naked, yeah, like on all fours or whatever. I have no frame of reference. I hope to see a woman naked someday, but please go on. The two cups of the buttocks oh, baby. form the shape, and then it points down to um, where the spine divots into the back. That's the line that would connect that shape. And then that is what was originally seen as the heart shape, because the heart shape doesn't look a damn thing like a heart. A heart looks like a potato. Are you making this shit up or is this real? No, this is, I've heard, I've, I've heard this before. In my head. Okay, but so I get the shape then there, but why the heart still? The butt has nothing to do with the heart. You know what I mean? Why'd they choose the heart for that? I think because people a thousand years ago were really into butt stuff. Yeah, well, they still are. <laughs> but I think it's been a mistake to do the heart for love all this time. It really should have been the bladder or the sphincter. Or the... Yeah, when they were deciding, okay, this does this and this does that, and they were wrong, because they used to think the brain was the heart and the heart was the brain. Yeah, exactly. 
yeah, how do you decide like, oh, I'm in love. It must be my, my friggin' My prostate. Yeah, my, my pro- prostate's flaring I, up. I love you with all my prostate. <laughs> You'll always be in my prostate, mom, <laughs> after you pass. <laughs> I'll never really be gone, Jimmy. I'll always be in your prostate. <laughs> I can keep going. Oh, don't. I'm going to die. <laughs> Did you pour some soda down your lungs? Into my lung. <laughs> this is <laughs> meta. Yep. Sorry. One okay, a few more facts on the heart. Heart disease is the leading cause of death for men, women, and people of most racial and ethnic groups in the United States. Bradley, one person dies every 34 seconds in the U.S. from cardiovascular disease. And it's probably way worse in Canada. Sorry, say that? I'll... 34 seconds. That's a good beat. Mm. Are you waiting for no, 34 just... seconds for the next... There's still about 17 more seconds waiting. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> See? Did you wait? A beat 34 seconds apart. That's a problem. Nice. <laughs> but I found this really interesting. Heart attacks peak on Christmas Day. That's the number one day of the year for heart attacks. I wonder why that is. Probably the stress. Well, uh, I think that's a fucking safe bet. Yeah. You know what I think it is? I would have thought in America it would have been Thanksgiving, but I guess Christmas will do. And I think it is. Because there's a spike in occasions of people getting punched in the chest by relatives in just that mm. perfect asymmetrical way that effectively just kind of shuts your heart off. Yeah. I think it could be people coming down the chimney to surprise their kids as Santa, and someone in the house gets scared, punches them in the chest. No more Santa. If you got stuck in a chimney... Okay, here's the fact. If you got stuck in a yeah. chimney upside down, you would die of pulmonary edema. Your organs would weigh against your heart oh. to the point where it would slow and eventually just stop beating. How long would that take? Days. <laughs> we got time. <laughs> I'll go climb in my chimney now. You can add it as the part two of the TikTok. I'm going to go put on the rest of that song where the beat happens every 34 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And we'll meet back here. So, okay. Imagine writing lyrics for a song with 34 seconds between each beat. We won't do that. My last note on heart is heart disease costs the United States about $229 billion each year. This includes the cost of healthcare services and medicines and lost productivity due to death, which seems <laughs> he could have left that last one out. <laughs> I love that somebody got paid. To... You don't get paid enough to say that. That's... I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I can promise you I don't get paid enough for any of this shit. Jolly old Saint Nick here. It's the holiday season, which means you're probably not eating as well as usual. I know I'm not. Luckily, I can still feel good because I drink AG1 by Athletic Greens every single day. Now, if you're anything like me, you struggle to find time to make healthier choices. That's why AG1 is great because it's simple and it actually tastes good. So what is this stuff? With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced ingredients, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging, all the things. Your body elves will thank you. You can feel great about taking AG1 because it contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or artificial anything while still tasting good. But don't take my word for it, AG1 has over 7,000 five-star reviews. Ready to try it for yourself? Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash tennis. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash tennis to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Visit athleticgreens.com slash tennis or just click the link in the show notes. Leftovers or the DMV or house cleaning. 
Chumba Casino always brings the fun. Play over a hundred different games online for free from anywhere. You could redeem some serious prizes. Chumba. Chumbacasino.com. Live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. We're prohibited by law. T plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. All right. Well, so you've got the lungs at four, the heart at five. What's left? Okay, let's jump around the list. Can I guess two at the same time? No. Kind of a process of elimination kind of a thing? No. All right, fine. I'll just pick some boring ass thing. Uh, what is up with the liver? Where do you think it is? I think the liver weighs more than the lungs. Yeah. It's number two. It's the second biggest organ in your body. And here's a big hint. It's the largest internal organ in your body. But it's number two on our list here at three and a half pounds. It's still not that big. I would have thought it was bigger. I'm picturing little old people at the gym and they have their like two and a half pound, three and a half pound weights. Yeah, you're there with them. And I'm just picturing like that could just be a handful of liver. Exactly. You're right. A couple of lungs. And we don't know that it's not. Have you gotten a good look? Because I have walked in on my grandma bench pressing livers before. And well, I've never, I mean, I've met your grandmother and she always smells like liver. I just didn't know there was a reason. Yeah. Well, that's why. But if you come on Tuesday, she smells like something else I won't get into. The liver is three and a half pounds. It is an accessory digestive organ that produces bile, an alkaline fluid containing cholesterol and bile acids, yummy, which helps the breakdown of fat. The liver is thought to be responsible for up to 500 separate functions, usually in combination with other systems and organs. So the liver, 500 functions it has, but it calls it an accessory digestive organ. What does that mean? Does that mean it's not necessary? Surely not, right? Uh, it's treating the liver like it's an intern. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that, that idea, you get a 20-year-old, you pay them $20,000 a year, and then you work them 20 hours a day. That, that's your liver. Which is why, even on the show, I have said, listen, mm -hmm. if you have skills that go above and beyond your core competencies at whatever job you do, and you, you're thinking of just blabbing them away to the upper staff, you are going to have so much more to do except cash a bigger check. That is always the way you can speak it from experience yeah that is from experience yes you, you got to do just enough to be good not coast like a step above coasting but you don't want to give them too much because they will take advantage of it i'm not trying to tell people what to do but i've seen so many people just like blown off the census on my show that i just feel like i have to say don't don't waste your precious precious time doing something you hate unless you have to if you have to do something you don't like, like, say, eating a giant shit sandwich, hmm. the key to eating a shit sandwich is to take big bites. Just gum, 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 gum. Just get through that thing. Don't belabor it, right? Right. So yeah. don't do what you don't like, but if you have to do what you don't like, take big bites. Do it fast. Imagine the shit sandwich traveling at 400 kilometers an hour through your intestines. That feels right at home in there. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. I have a question for you. The liver, which is located beneath the rib cage and lungs in the upper right area of your abdomen, 500 separate functions. How many body elves do you think it takes to manage such an important, highly functional organ? Sorry, I might have been dizzy there for a second. Did you just ask me how many body elves work your liver? <laughs> yes. So for newer listeners, there is a theory, a scientific theory. It's still under scientific evaluation. But there's a theory that there are Dozens of tiny little microscopic elves inside your body that are controlling every function. They're the ones making... The liver is just a blob of meat sitting there. It can't function unless the elves are in there operating it like a machinery. I'm sorry. Is this an American thing? That sounds a, just so stupid. This is a tennis podcast thing. In Canada, it's the little bone beavers that are in your body uh -huh. that like keep your bones all shiny with their teeth. And then they go around... And they make sure, like, everything's okay. Fucking stupid Canadians. My God. Elves. But they're not smart. Elves have brains. They can communicate. They can delegate. They can form unions. They can collaborate. They can get promoted. There's director elves and manager elves. There's lower management, upper management. These elves have a highly functional society to make sure that your body, your liver, is functioning optimally to keep you alive. Counterpoint. You know what my kids think about elves? Hmm. They think that the reason that Santa's is up at the North Pole is because all these kids who are crappy get kidnapped, dragged up to the, part, to the North uh -huh. Pole because there's no communication. They die before they ever got back to land. And now they are just put into these ridiculous costumes and called elves and forced to work. Sorry, where's the lie? Polar bears are 
ice or something is going to kill them if they try to escape. I think that makes more sense than these elves are willingly making toys for Santa's fat ass 365 days a year. Or running around inside your body doing beaver work. Has no one thought about the fact that these elves at Santa's workshop are putting like brand names on their toys? You know oh, it's the. It's a, it's a, <laughs> I've always bothered me. Even as a kid, I'm like just helicopters full of lawyers just flying around. Where the hell? <laughs> God damn it! Yeah, because these elves are making this stuff in the workshop. So if I get a PlayStation for Christmas, the elf fucking made it. I'm supposed to think. You don't mean the ploy statue? <laughs> no. Press the H button to turn it on. <laughs> you don't sound like an elf, just so you know. You fine. sound like a Russian. <laughs> it's fine too. Nothing against Russians. Well, some Russians, but not Russians in general. But Brad, I'm going to think that the liver requires most of the man hours from the elves because it's the largest organ in your body, largest internal organ. So I think at least two dozen elves just operate the liver. Okay, cool. So it's like a, uh, is it like one of those boats with all the people rowing the oars? Yeah, through, through the bloodstream. And then they get off at certain stations to perform their functions. And then they have an encampment somewhere in the body to camp out for the night. And they did just have a normal society there. There's a city in there, perhaps. This is just a theory, because I'm not a scientist. Oh, the miniaturized magical city of Bungla? Yeah. <laughs> no, I suppose you think the bone beavers are just in there doing all this shit. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That's not stupid. Well, a beaver could get this. Anyways, I'm not going to argue beavers. Okay. What else do we want to talk about? At any given moment, your liver is holding approximately one pint of your body's blood. And maybe some soda as well from two liters. Now, the liver accounts for about 20% of all rusting total body oxygen consumption. The liver requires a lot of oxygen for those elves, of course, to keep functioning at such a high rate. And it is the only human internal organ that can actually regenerate itself to any significant extent. So if your liver gets chopped in half by a beaver, let's say, mm -hmm. it can actually grow back, at least partially. It's the only organ that can do that. So here's the question. If I apologize to your grandmother in person no. on Tuesday and I take out your liver and I cut the thing in half and then we just sit there and watch, do you think after, after an appropriate amount of time you'll have two livers? No. Better question. Do you think while my grandma is weightlifting with the liver, which is out of my body at this point, it's just a liver, it's just a chunk of liver, mm -hmm. will that liver start to regenerate in her hands or does it have to be in my body to regenerate? I can't picture your grandmother lifting up a pound of liver without pulling it to her face at some point. <laughs> yeah, so no. That is hard to imagine. You're right. The rest is very easy to imagine. That part not. All right. A few more notes on the liver. I have a lot of notes just because it's the, one of the biggest. Some cultures regard the liver as the seat of the soul. I think that's the sphincter still, but what do I know? In Greek mythology, the gods punished Prometheus for revealing fire to humans. <laughs> I, okay. By chaining him to a rock where a vulture would peck out his liver, which would regenerate overnight. You're familiar with that story? I do know that story. That's a good one. So Prometheus can't show fire to anyone, I guess? But Okay, so here's a question. If you punched out that vulture and removed the liver from the stomach, do you think that by the next day you, or at some appropriate amount of time, you could grow a second Prometheus? From the liver. From the liver. Start with the liver. Was he a god, or is he just a guy? Uh, I know he's a dude. Okay. Yeah, I don't know where he sits in the pantheon. Yeah, I'm going to say you could probably grow like some feet from that liver, but probably not much else. Like, I don't think there's enough energy in the liver. Uh, because the body elves, if the body elves are still with the liver when the liver's out of the body, the body elves might be able to help with the regeneration process. But if the liver is without its body elves or even its full force of body elves and just some body elves, I don't think it can regenerate a full Prometheus. If you go to YouTube or if you go to, to uh, the CBC, it's the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation online. <laughs> Yeah, right. Like, I'm going to go there. If you find uh, medical videos, when we do liver transplants in Canada, we just put them on ice because it's everywhere. And we actually have medical grade beavers who just sit there and they just, they just kind of, <laughs> people love it because if it feels like, you know, we're doing a great job, this, you know, all these applause. It's the beaver. They pat <laughs> the liver or organs because they'll do it with hearts too. They'll pat the organs uh -huh. to keep blood flowing. You're generating extra blood flow. So, that, I mean, that's, that's the way we do it. It's, it's a very natural. Mm -hmm. The beaver is invited as part of the recuperation process as well. Uh -huh. It's beautiful. And it doesn't cost a thing. I mean, it's great. The beavers are doing this for free. No, I mean, you feed them. So, I mean, they're... Okay. You think the beaver could be uh, trained to, you know, pat, pat other things as well? 
You mean like a taint? <laughs> oh, you mean like your hand? Oh, baby. No. <laughs> you know what? If you're going to get sassy, a beaver tail could pat you across the face. Pretty hard. It's true. Just saying. I would not fuck with a the beaver. They also got the teeth that could gnaw you to death. That's true. All right. Enough of beavers, enough livers. Give me another guess. Well, I know that the heaviest organ in the body is your dong. Wow. Oh, that's it? That's the end of your sentence there? <laughs> I didn't know if there was more to it. <laughs> okay, so here's where, here's where I get confused. Because in my mind... Is the penis, the penis an, is an organ, right? That's what you're saying? Mm, it is an organ, isn't it? No, it's, it's, a it's, it's an appendage. Yeah. It's an appendage. It's a sex organ. I don't know if it's classified the same as like your internal but organs. If the girth and weight of your gigantic abnormal penis yeah. weighed more than your brain, hmm. that would really be saying a lot. And that's what's confusing me because in my head, I thought that the brain was going to be the second, first or second heaviest organ. No. It's stunning that it wouldn't be in it until you tell me how much it actually does weigh. 3.3 pounds. I feel like there's got to be people on the internet with genitals that weigh more than their brains. If you were to pile up your winky mm -hmm. and your testes into a ball mm -hmm. in your hands, maybe grandma's lifting with that too, in the other hand. Yeah, you claw it up like a ball, like you're going to eat it like an apple. Right, right, right. And you just kind of squeeze it real good. Would that weigh more than 3.3 pounds, do you think? I wouldn't think so. Well, I guess... Mm. No. No, you know what? No, because it doesn't have blood... Oh, I'm going to say it doesn't weigh as much because you're not counting the blood volume. That's what gives it the girth and weight and whatever. The winky is not on my list, but the brain is number three at 3.3 pounds. It's about the size of two clenched fists, or maybe a, a handful of balls in winky, one could say. Brad, did you know that the brain is like your body's computer? It processes information, interprets sensations, and controls behavior. It also regulates how you think and feel. Now, when you think about it, we all take it for granted, we don't even think about it, most of us. But the brain is a fucking crazy ass thing that exists in the human body i mean obviously it communicates with the rest of your body to keep you alive but also like the complex thought that goes on in your brain the complex emotions and feelings that all in your brain that no other living thing in the history of the planet has ever had to the extent that we do besides the ancient aliens that the government's hiding from us obviously yeah hail dark overlords yeah the brain is located in your skull it is divided into two halves which are connected by nerve fibers each half of the brain controls specific functions. The brain contains about 100 billion neurons and 100 trillion connections, which send signals to each other and throughout the body. The brain consumes up to 20% of the energy used by the human body, more than any other organ. Yeah. So when you're working out and burning a bunch of energy, 20% of that is actually in your brain, that energy is being used. I was doing a test online. There's a quiz. With a, they just show you a blank map, and you have to name every country in the world, 196 different countries. By the time that I got to Burkina Faso, I actually passed out. I was so exhausted, uh -huh. thinking so fast, because it's a timed quiz. We've all been there. I think everyone listening is nodding, because they can all relate. Yes, I've been taking a quiz about all 196 countries, and I, yes, it, Brad, I've also passed out. I bet a lot of people pass out listening to your show, because there's an awful lot to think about here. We learn so much every week. You joke, but it's true, because think, most shows are covering one or two topics at most per episode, right? Like, your, your yeah. podcast covers one main topic. We're covering 10 things, at least. Yeah. It's crazy. And we, we sidebar for Santa as well. I'm sure people fall asleep all the time. No. <laughs> it makes so much sense. It's not true. <laughs> Have you heard of Phineas Gage? Ah, who wants to talk about Phineas Gage more than... I'll let you tell. He is the man that listeners may recognize from psychology class. An iron rod passed through his skull without killing him, but it altered his cognition. The case helped to convince people that mental functions were localized in the brain because for a long time, people thought your emotions and feelings and all that was happening in the heart or even other parts of the body before that. But the brain has not always been understood for its full power until recently, relatively recently. Uh, Brad, your thoughts on uploading human consciousness? Oh, no, thank you. You don't want to do it? There was a movie with John Wick there, Keanu Reeves. Yeah. Listener of the show, Keanu Reeves. Listener of the show, yep. And he made a movie where that's exactly what they were doing. And they showed the test subjects along the way. And the first one they showed was a person. And as a person, you have eyesight and peripheral vision and senses about things around you. You can feel temperature and air and movement on your skin, yeah. in your hair, all of it. 
when you wake up in a robot body, you have 0.0 sensation of anything. And so this guy wakes up in this body, immediately starts screaming, and within seconds starts punching himself in the face over and over, trying to wreck his own brain. He's trying to punch through his brain to kill himself because the reality of waking up in that kind of con in that kind of like weird stunted consciousness freaked him out so hard he immediately wanted to die was and he in I a human that. body when he did that no like a robot body okay look you know humanoid robot body and i immediately would just start screaming at my tv for like four minutes like oh god no 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 and then i wrote to Keanu reeves and told him how much i loved him the first wooden man to play a robot in film <laughs> Wooden man, <laughs> it's very apt but you could also upload your consciousness into another person, perhaps. Like a body that's no longer being used. Yeah, that would be better. But I mean, people who have face transplants, mm. some of them just rip off their own faces after a while. Like, it has happened. The psychological damage of just even looking different. I mean, you saw Face Off. I mean, Jesus, of what an emotional Classic. roller coaster. Academy Award oh, winner, I think. Oh, God, yeah. stop it. Is that true? They've ripped their own face off? I'm sure I heard of a story. Like, I know there are people who have committed suicide. Yeah. I know people have committed suicide after getting the face transplants because they can't handle the psychological, just the existential horror of my face doesn't move the way it should. And it certainly doesn't look the way I think. So, yeah. yeah. Do they still feel in their face after a face transplant? I think they can in time, but the blood vessels need to connect. Like there's so much, like the brain, so much going on under there that needs to, you know, will it work? Will it heal? Well, it depends on the person. Yeah. It's a lot. But you didn't finish Phineas Gage. He blew out part of his brain. Yeah, so he... Which didn't help him make things so good. No. And then his brain rewired itself so that he could think, make more better. Yeah, something like that. And they, they left the rod sticking through his head, I think, his whole life, right? I'm joking. No, they took it out. <laughs> yeah, they took it out. <laughs> <laughs> but it'd be better if they left it in. <laughs> but they taught him how to twirl it over his head like a baton. So when they travel the country, it was like, oh, show. They put fireworks on the ends of it. And he twirls it. And he's just like, yeah. me, me make, thank you, guy, make, make happy times. <laughs> and he was into it because of his rewired brain. Yeah. The old Phineas Gage would have never done that. Well, the old Phineas Gage also wouldn't have taken $3 a year as a salary to do this. <laughs> True. We learned a lot from Phineas Gage. God bless him. Listener of the show. All right. So, so far you have number two, liver, number three, brain, number four, lung, number five, heart. Oh, crap. Okay, here we go. Let's just start rattling through these. I'm going to save number one because I've got a really gross way to describe it. The liver's neighbor is the kidney. In my brain, think of the kidney as being a little bit smaller than the liver. It is smaller than the liver. And the liver was two three and a half i'm gonna say the kidney is six. Oh, you mean the ranking yeah yeah the liver was three pounds at number two the kidney is just over half a pound at number six Oof. tiny little thing huh i can't believe i nailed that though i mean no can you say this with me you know the words good answer brad come on everyone at home just shut it Sorry, out you good answer you're brad. cutting out there i couldn't hear that say it again good answer brad good <laughs> answer brad good answer brad okay. The kidneys. Great answer, Brad. Each kidney is roughly the size of a small fist or, again, a handful of decapitated balls and penis, perhaps. You could think of it that way if it helps you. <laughs> it sure does. <laughs> you don't use severed ball and penis as a unit of measurement on your show a lot, but I might. Yeah, no, I think you're right. And I think I will start doing that as the standard going forward. Yeah. Each of your kidneys contains about one million filtering units. When blood enters your kidneys, these filters work to remove waste products, regulate your body's salt levers, and produce tasty, delicious urine. In just 24 hours, your kidneys filter approximately 200 quarts of fluid. About two quarts of this is eliminated from your body as urine. 200 quarts of fluid per day is regulated in your kidneys, and you're only getting rid of two out of 200 quarts per day. That's a lot. <sighs> when I think about how much you get done in a day, and then if you really, really think about how much your kidney did that day, you should cry to yourself to sleep sometimes. Yeah. You know, like weekdays or whatever. First of all, we don't thank our kidneys. We thank the body elves for their dedication and work. But also our tears, are those like regulated in the kidneys as well? Same fluid source? Not that I'm aware of. I mean, it could because hydration comes in, goes into the stomach and then does magic, I assume. The beavers splash it around the rest of the body where <laughs> necessary. Yeah. Yeah, I would think... Uh, I would Jury's think out that on the beaver, but the rest sounds right. If the tear ducts are connected to the kidneys, that's fantastic. I can't imagine they are. 
but that's hilarious to me that there's <laughs> the same thing that regulates your urine and your tears yeah. is coming from the same place at your kidneys. I'm pretty sad. Give me a minute here. I'm going to start crying soon. It's fast. Here it comes. I the body's really fast. Here it comes. Did you know that the kidneys are located at the bottom of your rib cage, one on each side of your spine? And in ancient Egypt, the kidneys, like the heart, were left inside the mummified bodies, unlike other organs which were removed. It is believed that the Egyptian beliefs had connected the kidneys with judgment. Think of the kidneys like a scale, one on each side of a scale. Yeah. And perhaps with moral decisions. Fucking stupid Egyptians, am I right? They went through the nose to pull out the brain because it was nonsense. Not needed. Yeah. All that wasted time of sucking out brain from the nose and they could have just, didn't have to mummify anyone at all, really. Just, yeah. The ancient aliens should have told them. But can you imagine like just removing a brain, throwing it into a trash can, and then holding the kidneys over your head? <laughs> yeah. We're glorifying the kidneys and you just threw away the best part, tastiest part too. And aliens are looking and saying they must be the most delicious part of the body. Quick, feed them all kidneys. <laughs> the aliens are looking around at each other being like, fuck, I think we landed on the wrong planet. <laughs> Leftovers or the DMV or house cleaning or Chumba Casino always brings the fun. Play over a hundred different games online for free from anywhere. You could redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. Live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. T plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Leftovers or Chumba. The DMV Number 97. or Chumba. House cleaning. Chumba Casino always brings the fun. Play over a hundred different games online for free from anywhere. You could redeem some serious prizes. Chumba. Chumbacasino.com. Live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Leftovers or Ch -ch 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 Chumba. The DMV Number 97 or Ch -ch 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 Chumba. House cleaning. Chumba Casino always brings the fun. Play over a hundred different games online for free from anywhere. You could redeem some serious prizes. Chumba. Chumbacasino.com. Live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. The kidneys were number six. What do you think is next? Bladder. The bladder's a great guess. I would have guessed it too. But no awesome guess, Brad, chance for you on this one. Really? it's not in the top ten. It must be pretty thin-skinned or something. It's small. Just for context, the number 10 item on this list is less than half an ounce in weight. Would that be the spleen? Number 10 is not the spleen. The spleen is number 7. Less than 0 0.4 pounds. These numbers are meaningless. They're so light. <laughs> it's, They're like it's little crazy. birds. Cute little birds, the spleen. Spleen's one you can also live without, kind of like the appendix, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You can. Yep. It is similar in structure to a large lymph node. It acts primarily as a blood filter. The spleen removes old red blood cells and holds a reserve of blood, which can be valuable in case of hemorrhagic shock. Am I saying hemorrhaging? Hemorrhagic shock. Hemorrhagic. Yeah. And also recycles iron. It's located in the upper left abdomen behind the tummy. And in English, William Shakespeare frequently used the word spleen to signify melancholy, but also caprice and merriment. Now, why? <laughs> You're nodding as if you knew that. Now, why the fuck did he do that? Yeah, see, growing up in uh, Renaissance uh, Italy... As you did. You'd vent your spleen when, you, when things were just like, oh, I'm all hot and bothered or whatever. Your beavers get all excited and you vent your spleen. That not make it sense? It sounds like something he said nonsensibly and then it's just stuck and he just stuck with it. But we don't even know if William Shakespeare was real. You know what's amazing about what you just said? Huh. That is exactly how Eat My Butt got started. I think Shakespeare started that one, too. <laughs> you just say it, and people start saying it back to you, like, eat my butt. It just picks up. It just picks up off. from there. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, I wonder if there's any chance eatmybutt.com has been taken already. 100%. 100%. Oh, I bet my life fucking savings on it, Brad. <laughs> Fair enough. But, you know, William Shakespeare, the inventor of eat my butt, <laughs> the poetry <laughs> of eat my butt. The spiritual godfather of eat my butt. <laughs> Guarantee you. One hell of an ass on that guy. Guarantee it. 
as many men around the time period would probably <laughs> agree. Um, so, uh, which is fine. Not that there's anything wrong with that. So give me another guess. Stomach. No. Is that considered an organ? It must be, right? I don't know. Yeah. It's not on here. Well, I'm sure my stomach weighs more than a bird, so I'm going to say... <laughs> but the if there's is nothing wrong. inside of it, like not even any fluids in it, no anything in it, it's tiny. It expands. Here's a question. Who am I missing? Seven, eight, nine? No, you need eight, nine, ten, and one. Oh, okay. Let's see. Eight, nine, ten. How about... The hell else is in you? We talked Not about it earlier nine. when I said it could have been in place of the heart. Oh, I've always loved you. You'll always be in my... Wait. Prostate. Oh, it wasn't the prostate. Yeah. I, I would have thought the prostate weighed like as much as a nickel or something. Well, it does. It's number 10. It lay, weighs less than half an ounce. I don't know how the stomach is not on here, but I looked at several lists and none of them had the stomach on it. Huh. So maybe it's not considered an organ or something. I don't know because... But it should. I don't know. And I mean, they probably consider it part of a system. Yeah, maybe. But still. Yeah. Well, it's not on here. Prostate gland is at number 10. What were you going to say? Uh, I was trying to figure out eight and nine. Because apparently I don't know what the hell anything weighs. I'm no. Like, uh, what do you got? Well, you, got you got glands in your armpits and neck, or do they weigh a bunch? There's something in your neck. But hold that thought. I'm going to tell you about the prostate. It is an accessory gland of the male reproductive system and a muscle-driven mechanical switch between urination and ejaculation. Oh, baby. It is found only in some mammals. So this is a male-exclusive organ. Yeah. It's when you... Men, gentlemen, when you're clinching up to hold your PP in, or when you're clinching up to last a little bit longer during those magical moments, that is your prostate gland at work. The prostate glands produce and contain fluid that forms part of semen, the substance emitted during, <laughs> during ejaculation <laughs> as, part, as part of the male sexual response. You know what? I wonder what percentage of your audience rewound like 30 <laughs> seconds and replayed you, but like at half speed. The seminal fluid. It's just a little slower, a little deeper. Yeah. I just like that because they had to explain that semen is a substance emitted during ejaculation as if I don't fucking know that already. Trust well, me, I, I know. Mean, it's I ideally is what's supposed to happen. Yeah, ideally. You're right. In adults, it is about the size of a walnut. It's located in the pelvis, just below the bladder, and it surrounds the urethra, the very sexy urethra. Now, prostate cancer is one of the most common cancers affecting older men in the UK, the US, Northern Europe, and Australia. It's also a significant cause of death for elderly men worldwide. In America, there's about 35,000 deaths per year from prostate cancer. That's a lot. It's a lot, yeah. It's one of the deadliest killers of men. And my last note is that one method to checking prostate is by shoving a finger up your rectum. Brad, have you had your prostate checked recently? I have not, actually. You should get on that. Hmm. Huh. I should get on that. When you come over to cut me open for my TikTok, I'll check your yes, prostate. Before. I'll check your prostate. Oh, jinx, you owe me. A beaver. A beaver pellet. <laughs> a beaver. <laughs> oh, God. I, I can't wait for my beaver pellet. I completely forgot what the hell I was going to say. Sorry, sorry. Let's keep it going. All right. So I mentioned an organ that is inside your neck area. What is that? <laughs> well, I don't know what organ is in your neck right now, but... I think mine might be the thyroid? The thyroid, Bradley. It's number nine. And it is in the neck, yes? It's near the front of the neck, lying against and around yep. the front of the larynx and trachea. It's a butterfly-shaped organ, so it's very cute. It controls body's energy use, makes proteins, and controls hormone sensitivities. Weight gain can be related to, th mm -hmm. to a bad thyroid as well. The gland is usually larger in women than in men. But that's okay, because men has bigger brains. Am I right, fellas? Oh. Just kidding. I just lost every female subscriber I have, but that's okay. We'll start over. <laughs> we'll start over on Brad's We'll build podcast. again. <laughs> We're going to build again. Wait till they hear the description of number one. We'll build again. Yes. The gland is usually larger in women and increases in size during pregnancy. In the year 1500, Leonardo da Vinci provided the first illustration of the thyroid, though it did not receive its modern name until the 1600s. Why this guy was drawing a thyroid, I'm not sure. Thank you. That's what I was thinking. He should have been drawing the Mona Lisa, but maybe someone was sitting next to him painting the Mona Lisa when he was painting a thyroid. They got him mixed up like babies at a hospital. He went home with the Mona Lisa. <laughs> the other guy went home with the drawing of a thyroid. You don't think that's possible? I'm pretty sure that he was so into Mona Lisa that he was painting her. Someone came in to interrupt. He 
swept out, just ah, swept out the throat like it's the end of, uh, what was that movie, Roadhouse? Yeah. And then just kind of went through it all. Oh, what's this? Thought it was Looks pretty. Like a butterfly. It's like a, yeah, it's like a bloody dead butterfly. I'm going to paint it. Because you got to paint it, you pervert. Can't just eat it like a normal person. <laughs> <laughs> My last thing is a goiter. Have you, you know what a goiter is? I've never seen one, but I do know what it is. We do watch Seinfeld. God damn you, Brad. That's exactly what I was going to say. When I hear goiter, the first thing I think of is that Seinfeld episode. Looks like a football. <laughs> In the side of my neck. I used it to bang Gandhi. <laughs> the Maha. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, it's a swelling in the, in the neck. And no offense to anyone listening with a goiter, but if you want to see a goiter, look it up and you'll be fucking horrified. It is an enlarged thyroid gland. So if you want to have your day ruined, look up images of a goiter. I love it. All right, you just need one and eight. And eight is quick and sweet. So let's get it over with. It is located in the abdomen, stretching from behind the stomach to the left upper abdomen near the spleen. Does that mean anything to you? God, that description was... <laughs> <laughs> so which of the 79 organs is that? What I just listened to was like when you listen to the Californians, and they're just going on about, you know, oh, I had to go down San Clemente to the 101, and then switched over to San Bernardino, and then took the 410 up to... <laughs> okay. Yeah. Because that's a lot Describe less. Describe that again. It's a triangular shaped doodad that hides behind your spine and then runs up under your lungs. It is involved in blood sugar control and metabolism within the body. And also in the secretion of substances, collectively pancreatic. Oops, I just ruined it. Juice. Pancreas! That help digestion. Yes, the pancreas at 0 0.15 pounds is number eight. Jesus. You never think about the pancreas. No. That thing doesn't get any love. Uh, people with diabetes probably thinking about it because of its role in the regulation of blood sugar. The pancreas is also a key organ in diabetes. Diabetes. It was only in 1889 mm, when Oscar Mankowski, listener of the show, discovered that removing the pancreas from a dog caused it to become diabetic. And now I'm just fucking angry at Oscar for ruining this dog's life. Your life isn't ruined. It just needs to be maintained and managed through, uh, through medicine. Well, the dog became diabetic. I don't think they had diabetic medicine for dogs in 1889. They were just discovering I'm what pretty, diabetes was. I'm pretty sure the minute that that experiment was done, they ripped out that dog's throat like it was the end of Roadhouse and yeah. then pulled it apart and, and cooked and ate uh, what they found. The, and thyroid. Uh, thyroid. <laughs> yeah. I think you're right. I think you're right. So how sexy do you think the, prost the, the pancreas is? You think it's one of the sexier organs? <laughs> I bet the color of your pancreas could cancel an erection. Yeah. I bet it's one of those just uh -huh. <laughs> pucy kind of nondescript, really non-saturated kind of smelly looking colors. Hang on, you're getting some blood flow to my penis here. Can you, can you uh -oh. stop? <laughs> here, hold on. I'm going to pull up some pancreas on the internet here and get rid of that thing for you. <laughs> no, I want to keep it. You just need number one. There's some skin on it. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> it's your penis has some of this organ in, on it. I knew it was going to be the heaviest. What do you think the skin weighs? That's a great question. Yeah, what percentage of a, of a typical body weight would skin be? I'll say 10 pounds? Fucking Brad, you got it right on the money. 10 pounds. Are you kidding? Are you here already in my house looking over my shoulder at my notes to see that 10 pounds? <laughs> we need, fuck, yeah, Brad's here. Yeah. Everybody run. Yeah, go open the door. <laughs> my knife is getting cold. Now yeah, go open the door. You got grandma with you? <laughs> Your grandmother wants to come say hello. Grandma, I promise you don't want to come in here when you see what Brad's gonna do to us. <laughs> Nick, you're getting she's getting liver all over your door. You gotta open the door. <laughs> Nicky, open the door. It is in me. You I sound like you. Miss Piggy. It's all I love you. <laughs> <laughs> you should just do this the rest of the episode. Nick, it's not like liver out here. Nick, please help. This is way better than you guessing badly. Hmm. <laughs> debatable. <laughs> well, debatable, sure, but the skin is number one at 10 pounds. The three main functions of the skin are, Brad, go, three main functions. To prevent skin cancer on your organs, to keep your bones clean, and mm. to keep bugs out of your junk. Like, and by junk, I don't mean like your genitals. I mean, like, all of, like, everything. Right. That's one way to put it. 
CDC put it as protection, regulation, and sensation. The three things Boom, your skin done. do. Yeah, you, you covered them, I think. Skin also looks great on furniture. Just ask Ed Gein. Yeah. Where's the skin located? On the farthest outposts of every inch of your body? I just wrote everywhere in all caps, so I'll accept your answer. The skin has up to seven layers of ectodermal tissue. The epidermis is the outermost layer of the skin. It forms the waterproof protective wrap over the body surface. In humans, skin pigmentation varies among populations, and skin type can range from dry to non-dry, from oily to non-oily. Such skin variety provides a rich and diverse habitat for bacteria present on the human skin. In total, more than 1.5 trillion bacteria live on your skin right now. Sweet! In some wet places, like, you know, some wet places of the body, tens of millions of microbes live on every square centimeter of skin. So on your sweaty taint right now, Brad, there is tens of millions of microbes alive on every square centimeter of your taint. And not one of them paying. <laughs> no. Could we start an OnlyFans for skin bacteria? We're way late to that party, Brad. Okay. All right. No, that's fine. But if any listeners are freaked out by the amount of bacteria on your skin right now, living and breathing and fucking right now, most of them are useful to your body and actually harmless. So there's that. My last note is that human skin shows higher variation in color than any other single mammalian species, and it is the result of natural selection. Sorry, you mean of all the mammalians? All the mammalians, yes. You can't let me have anything, can you? Nope, not ever. You know what's really interesting about skin? Tell me. You know when you see people with vitiligo or any kind of yeah. hyperpigmentation where the, you know, the skin changes color? I've got a little bit of hyperpigmentation here. Apparently... When that happens, that's revealing something that exists in all of us. So if you were exposed to a UV light, I don't know if it's UV light, I can't remember what kind of light you would have to use to actually see this, a spe like a special part of the spectrum of UV, I assume. You are covered in patterns and swirls and all sorts of stuff. Your skin has, yeah. your skin, you don't look like you. You look, you only see you as just sort of like a, uh, a largely uh, singular tone. But you're not. You're painted and all sorts of crazy crap. It's true. We just can't see it. And I was listening to a thing where they were describing how vitiligo is almost like a failure of that hiding response in a way. And so in, in that way, you're seeing people kind of painted in the way that we all are. We just don't have the eyeballs to be able to see. Because it's like we are all like that. But because of the restrictions of our eyesight. Mm -hmm. Poor Michael Jackson. Yeah, you're right. I forgot he had vitiligo. That's true. Anyway. On that lovely note, Brad, you took it home for us on skin. Thank you. Damn right. Let's go back through the top 10. And when we're done, I want you to tell me your favorite organ. Number 10 is the prostate gland. Should have been the heart all along. Number 9 is the thyroid. Number 8 is the pancreas. Number 7 is the spleen. Number 6 is the kidneys. Number 5, the heart. Now get this. We're all the way up. We just finished number 5. And just now at number four, are we getting over one pound in weight? <laughs> I know. Everything has been less than a pound so far. The lungs are number four at just under three pounds. The brain is number three at three pounds. The liver is number two at three and a half pounds. And the skin, the largest organ on your body, is just under 10 pounds at number one. You know, you could have tricked me onto the show today and just said, okay, I need you to guess the, sorry, top 10 beach pebbles that I'm holding <laughs> in my hand. <laughs> and it's just like, uh, I guess that guy, that guy, that guy. And then once we get over number four, that big bastard, that slightly bigger uh -huh. bastard, and then number one's just the, the, the obviously the larger, the largest of them all. And the, the rest are just like... Yeah, sh they're uh, all just kind of scattered about yeah. and look the same, yeah. I just was really surprised that like even the heart is not even half a pound. No. Yeah, it's just crazy. But when it's full of blood... Right. Like a, a something the size of a, of a fist of liquid would weigh... Or a fist like, of balls and penis would weigh. Sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah, anything you can fist... Some people are more comfortable with that metric. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not on my show, but... Yeah. <laughs> I'm just visiting. <laughs> you are just visiting. <laughs> and I'm going to give you a chance to plug your show here in a moment, but first, I need to give a quick heads up to my listeners that a new Tennis Pod Plus episode, bonus episode, is out right now. 
I welcomed podcast host and comedian Jared Grimm onto the show to talk about the top 10 highest grossing movies of 2022. There are definitely some surprises on the list, and you can listen now to see if you can guess better than Jared did. You can listen now on Tennis Pod Plus. Joining is easy. Just go to tennispod.com slash plus. Or if you're an Apple Podcast listener, tap the Try Free button at the top of our Apple page to unlock a free seven-day trial. Membership also includes instant access to over 50 other bonus episodes, ad-free versions of our main episodes, like the one you're listening to now, and much more. Brad, if you're not writing that down fast enough, it's tennispod.com slash plus, or sign up on Apple Podcasts. Are you glad you could be here for a real live reading of my plug? I really am. Okay, audience, do everything he just said, but replace uh, Tennis with Doomsday. (laughs) See you soon. Okay, go listen to Doomsday History's Most kidding. Dangerous Podcast. No, you really should, though. Tell the folks uh, some recent episodes and some coming up. Okay, I don't want to spoil anything, but here I go. I just put out an episode about the worst space disaster in human history. I listened to that. Oh, nice. The next episode, we are oh, the next episode, we're going to Florida for the first time ever. Surprised it took you this long. It took a while. I had to pick a really weird, uh, I had to pick a kind of a strange one for Florida. And then there's just lots of Florida crap thrown in there because I do love tangents. So a lot of Florida people will be mentioned for February, for the beginning of February, in honor of the Super Bowl, I am doing the 1900 big game disaster. That sounds fun because the Super Bowl wasn't around yet. No. Where? Tell me where it took place. Uh, I think it was San Francisco. Okay. And I really want to tell you it's... Well, don't tell me. I want to be surprised. And this is good timing because this episode drops the last week of January. So right around the corner from when this drops, that episode will be on the... And if you're ready for some football, look up History's Most Dangerous Podcast. I don't know who that was. It sounded like a... Constipated Canadian? Macho Man. No, it was not Macho Man. Oh, yeah! Yeah, I dig it! Our beavers take care of constipation. We're good that way. God damn. Those beavers are constipated themselves, I'm sure, eating all that Canadian log. They build and break dams. Yeah. And damn, if you want a direct link to Brad's podcast, check the show notes. You can find it on any podcast app. Highly recommend it. Someday, Brad, we should do a swap without explanation. We don't give any heads up, no context. I just start doing your show one episode and you just start doing mine. We let the listeners figure it out. Um, there is a, there is an April podcast switcheroo. We could do each other's shows. Let's do it. All right. That's hilarious. I'm just going to... Then again, I don't want to lose every listener I've ever gotten. So maybe not. (laughs) Okay. We'll we'll talk about it. You'll always have your kids. (laughs) You can hear them? (laughs) Well, they outnumber your fans. So I'm just... Oh, uh, I got you. Yeah. Do you have two kids? Sorry. I'm just trying to... Just trying to get all that... that, You got a little... Little fire. Little... Just a little burn. God damn. Okay, it's time to fucking end this. Hold Brad's, on, I'm just gonna rub uh, a, I'm rubbing a little aloe on it. Brad's dad jokes are starting to show. We gotta get out of here. Okay. He's Brad Choma. I'm Nick Amell. I want to thank you for listening. I'll be back next week with episode 202. My special guest will be that living prostate himself, Dr. Buster. Oh no! Yeah. Can I get his address so I can apologize to him for appearing on your show next week? I'll see if I can find that address, Brad, yes. And I'll give you my address as well. And my grandmother's address. Any other addresses you want? Can I send you a list? Yes, please do. I love we'll lists. Back. You might have we'll heard. Back. Yeah. Ah, then I'm going to do an episode, the top 10 addresses that I want from Nick, and you have to sit there and just guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That'll be a great bonus episode that the listeners are going to... People will love this. Yeah, they'll eat it right First up. First two-hour episode. Yeah, two-parter. All right. That's enough for us. Thank you again for listening. I'll see you next week. Bye. Casino asking people what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kids' PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. 
Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.